Just like everybody else, I enjoy riding in summer, but there are a few elusive weeks in autumn where the roads are still dry, the summer heat has gone but it's not too cold and there's just that little bit less traffic on the roads. It's a sort of a Goldilocks period, it doesn't last very long but I think that's what makes it feel so special to me. And on Sunday I took advantage of a break in the weather to take a ride up to Fimber, one of the local bike gathering spots. It's about a 40-45 minute run from my house. Thoroughly enjoying myself, my mind started to wander and it landed back on that question that I've tried to answer so many times. What is it about modern classic bikes that attracts us? Why do we ride them over other machines? And what is it about them that some people quite simply don't get or don't understand? Now, there was something nagging in the back of my mind, a sort of a elusive connection that I hadn't quite made at that point. As you may or may not be aware, it was my birthday last week and prior to my birthday my partner had asked me, you know, what I wanted for my birthday. Back in the olden days when I was still a policeman, I always used to use a fountain pen and obviously in that job there was a lot of writing, especially back in those days. I don't do much in the way of handwriting these days, I don't think any of us do, but I'm constantly having to scribble things down on scrap bits of paper which get lost. I didn't really have a pen I could call my own and it's a regular thing hunting around the house trying to find a ballpoint from somewhere to scribble a phone number down or an email address. And so I came to the decision that what I would like for my birthday is some sort of notebook and a decent quality fountain pen. A partner agreed I was given a budget and I started looking into what was available. Now YouTube is a very shallow platform. This channel unfortunately has more than its fair share of viewers that just want to hear exhaust notes from motorcycles and they're not interested in much else. But I believe that motorcycling is much deeper than that, it's more cerebral than most channels present it to be, so bear with me, this is going somewhere, I promise. Now, the first thing that shocked me was just how popular fountain pens now are. Apparently, the sale of fountain pens has exploded in the last 10 years, with an increase in sales year on year. There are far more fountain pens currently being sold now than there were 20 years ago, with an increase in percentage running into the thousands. And this is in a modern world where the requirement to actually physically hand write something has diminished to almost nothing over the last 10 or 15 years because of the internet and mobile phones and the invention of things like text and email. Now, a lot of people think of fountain pens as being old-fashioned, leaky, inconvenient, messy and impractical. Old technology that just doesn't have any relevance in the modern world. Yet at the same time, as fountain pen sales are increasing, the sales of the humble ballpoint pen are year on year gradually diminishing because people are using them less. If they want to contact someone, they email or they text or they use WhatsApp. Or if they actually have to send a physical letter, they'll bang it out on the computer and print it. So why this anomaly if pens are fading in popularity with sales in your common old garden ballpoint pen dropping off? Why are fountain pen sales doing so well? Now my first reaction, as I'm sure yours will be, is it's nostalgia. Just like with modern classic bikes, Fountain pens are a blast from the past. It's an experience that takes you back to your younger days, you know, school or your early working life. And that's all there is to it, it's just people trying to relive the youth as they get older. But just as with modern classic bikes, that's not the whole story. There's far more to it than that. In fact, nostalgia is only a very small part of it. Now, there is a bewildering array of fountain pens on the market in all price groups. Everything from your humble Parker Jotta for around about 10 or 15 pounds, right up to your high-class luxury Mount Blancs. 
that can run into hundreds, even thousands of pounds. And whilst trying to decide what pen it was that I wanted, I came across this, a Caveco Sport Brass. Right, we're at about the five and a half minute mark now, so hopefully all those shallow people will have stopped watching the video and will have popped off to the comments section to leave a complaint about how this video has no relevance to motorcycling. You know, the ones that just want bullet points, they want all the information throwing at them in the first 60 seconds. Abbreviated information because they're not capable of coping with any more than that. And for those of you that are left, first of all, thanks very much. And I'm going to try and explain to you what the connection is. Now, Quebeco is a German company that goes back to way back when. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not a pen expert. They were revitalized in the 1980s. And the first model that they introduced, or should I say reintroduced, was the Quebeco Sport. A tiny little fountain pen. I believe it's actually what's known as a trench pen. These were designed for military use in the trenches way back in the 1930s. And of course, because of the environment that they were designed to be used in, they had to be pretty much bomb proof. So, okay, I like my classically styled bikes. I also like classically styled fountain pens, but there are more similarities to the kind of bike I like to ride than first meets the eye. First of all, these, like all fountain pens, are highly customizable. There are choices of different sized nibs to suit your handwriting. It doesn't come with a shirt clip out of the box, but there are a choice of different custom shirt clips so that you can make your own statement with it. It's available in many different materials and finishes. And of course, like with any other fountain pen, you have a choice what colour ink you use. In fact, ink producers, businesses that 10 years ago were about to go out of business, are doing even better than fountain pen manufacturers with a bewildering array of different colours and different types of ink. So right off the bat, what do we have with the fountain pen? Well, it's a statement piece. Like a modern classic motorcycle, it says something about its owner. For a start, that person, he or she, is an individual that don't run with the head. They don't use a rollerball or a ballpoint pen, just as they don't ride a generic sport bike, tourer or adventure tourer. They ride a bike that is distinctly classic in the way it looks and performs. It portrays a feeling of sophistication and quality, classic values. Yes, that part is about vanity, but it's about projecting your personality to others when they see you ride up on your bike or pull out a pen to sign a cheque. If you pull up at a bike meet on an adventure tourer or a sport bike, you're just another Joe Bloggs no one really notices. They're a generic bike that, in essence, project a herd mentality you're just riding what everybody else rides when you pull up on a modern classic it's a very different projection it doesn't matter to the rider what other people's perception of you are whether it's good or bad but the projection is that you are an individual you don't run with the head you're not the same as everyone else you take your own road you don't follow the same road that the herd follows and it's the same when you're signing a document. If you pull out a disposable big pen to sign a document with, no one notices. It's a generic pen just like every other pen. But if you pull out a fountain pen to sign a document, it's making a statement that you care, that you've taken the trouble to select the right instrument for the job. A deliberate act of ensuring the quality of what you're about to do. And this, for me, is where it all comes together, where the two different things, motorcycles and pens, share a common ground. One that, as far as motorcycles are concerned, to be honest, I hadn't fully grasped until that ride this weekend. Now, there are many countries in Europe where it's mandatory for students to use fountain pens in schools, colleges and universities. And there's a reason for that. A fountain pen is a little bit more difficult to use than a ballpoint pen or a rollerball. 
It requires practice and skill. It forces you to slow down and be more deliberate in what you're doing. It forces you to think, and that's considered to be part of the educational process. It's an item that requires a degree of maintenance. It has to be cleaned periodically and flushed out. It has to be physically refilled with ink. You don't just throw it away and get another one when it runs out. It teaches values and creates an element of order in the human brain. If everything is just too easy, you lose focus, you make mistakes, and you become careless. And in this modern world where everything is progressively becoming easier, maintenance-free, disposable, everything done for you, there's an element of the human psyche in some individuals that is rebelling against this, that don't want it, because they can see the dangers that these things present. Fifteen years ago, modern classics weren't really a thing, but in the last ten years we've seen an explosion in sales. An explosion that's gone into hyperdrive over the last two or three years, partly in response to the Royal Enfield Interceptor and Continental GT, I think. But this rise in sales sort of coincides with the rise in technology of other types of bike. Okay, ABS is mandatory on all bikes in Europe now. But as bike manufacturers have increased performance in order to garner sales, they've also introduced a myriad of electronic riding aids in the name of safety that remove the control and responsibility that a rider used to have. Things like traction control, ABS designed to compensate for lean angles, tyre pressure sensors, onboard fuel computers, self-cancelling indicated heated seats, heated grips, and driver modes to suit the riding conditions, and electronic self-adjusting suspension systems. Devices that remove the rider's common sense and the need for skill. Bikes that are no longer user serviceable. With your average rider not having a clue about the mechanics of his bike and whether something is right or wrong with it. The culmination of all these things once you put them together is that it dumbs the rider's skills down. He is effectively relying on the bike to compensate for his mistakes and keep him safe. And to be honest, this technology isn't that good yet. It also puts the rider at the mercy of the dealerships and the manufacturers who can charge pretty much whatever they like for servicing because the owner can't do any of it himself. Now, please don't get me wrong, I'm not a technophobe. I love technology, I embrace it. I'd be lost without my sat-nav. But I'm also bright enough to see that even technology which is designed to enhance safety can work against us. Human nature is human nature. We become lazy, we become too reliant on that technology. People will take risks that they wouldn't take if they knew that technology wasn't there. In general, modern classics tend not to have much in the way of that sort of technology. In the case of the Interceptor and the Continental GT, it has virtually none. And for the experienced rider with some wool on his back, that's the attraction. It forces him to be aware. It forces him to rely on his own senses and his own skills, not some electronic brain hidden under the tank. It reminds him to ride within the capabilities of the machine and him or herself. And it improves his skill set, or at the very least, allows him to retain the skills that he has, rather than just relinquishing them to automation. And even with novices, similarly to those fountain pens, it forces them to slow down. It forces them to think about what they're doing. It forces them to be more aware of the road. And in the long run, if natural selection doesn't sort them out first, it will teach them to be more responsible and skillful riders. I think on the whole, now more than ever, the sales figures prove that there is still place for an analogue motorcycle in what is becoming a digital industry. And whatever your reasons happen to be for choosing a modern classic motorcycle, there's absolutely no doubt about it. 
that can provide you with a pure and genuine motorcycle experience in a way no other bike can. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I sincerely hope that this video has struck a chord with a few people or you have at least enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be informed whenever I upload a new video. I will, of course, be back on Friday, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.